Web development. You've heard about it. You know you have to do it. How much of it do you actually have to learn? So if you take a look at skillsec.io, we're now on uh, the week where we are going to talk about web development. So weeks 21 through 25, we're going to spend about four weeks uh, making videos and talking about website development. Just a reminder, every day at 9 a.m. my time, there's a coffee boost. You can come on in and ask your questions. You can also ask in Discord. Um, so as we kick off the web stage of the beginner boost, um, just know that you can come in and get those questions answered. So what does the web mean? Let, let's, let me give you one last breakdown. This is what we are currently planning uh, for the basic uh, website stage. Uh, one, well, let me just go ahead and read it. This stage lifts you off the ground by learning the most rudimentary tech skills required by any tech professional basic web development. Of course, not everyone will become a web developer by profession, but every single technologist there's a typo there, which I will now correct. There should be an N there. Uh, is implicitly expected to know and create simple static web pages with Markdown, HTML, CSS, and perhaps a little JSON and YAML structure data. This skill is so ubiquitous, it is almost never mentioned explicitly in a job description, but it is always implied. And I really want to emphasize this. Every single tech job expects you to know how to make a web document. They don't expect you how to make an app or no React, but they expect you to be able to take any kind of document and just do you create documentation and to write it. And you'd be surprised where this stuff pops up. Uh, for example, in the use of Slack, a lot of people don't know that Slack, you know, Slack chat, which is used a lot of places or a lot of chat tools, they use Markdown. And you're like, well, why Markdown? So here's the breakdown of what we're going to do for now. This video might be changed over time, but this is the, the plan for the next four weeks, the topics we're going to cover. And I'm going to make as many of these videos right now. So the first thing we're going to do is understand why learning basic web development even matters. I kind of already said it, but we'll say it again. Know a bit of history about how the web came to be. You might not need to know the, in, the entire thing, but it is actually extremely interesting to find out how the web came to be. It's, I really encourage you to not skip that video. It's very fun. Um, explain the different uses of the web. Some of the biggest sources of confusion when it comes to web development come from the inability for the person to distinguish between what they're doing on the web. Okay, so why, why, and some of the biggest fights are about completely different types of web development. So we need to talk about that. Looking up documentation about web development when needed. We need to know where to go to get the documentation. Where are you going to search? You know, is it going to be Stack Exchange? Uh, you know, spoiler alert, we're going to use the official documentation. You need to learn basic, conventional, GitHub flavored markdown. That title is very, very specifically chosen because it is so important that you learn to use everything that has been added to Markdown from its original form uh, so that you can create really relevant, amazing documents. In fact, this, this skillsec.io site uses that exact thing. And you'll see that most of the time when you're writing, you're going to be writing in Markdown, not HTML. But you do need to understand HTML in order to know how it corresponds to Markdown. This is very specific. We do not need to learn more Markdown than is required. I mean, more HTML than is required. We will look at the HTML specification and it can be somewhat overwhelming because there's so much stuff there. You're going to be like, do I need to learn every single one of these? The answer is no, but you should learn enough HTML so that you can at least understand a Markdown document that's been converted into a document. Notice I keep saying document, right? This is super important. I'm not saying app. Right. I'm saying document. And that's because this create a basic website uh, is fundamentally about documents. And we, we talk about it in that in the different uses of the web video. So next, learn just enough CSS to style a basic website. You want to change your background. You want to, you know, maybe create a well, that's really it. <laughs> You just want to stylize your website. You don't want to make it too crazy. Um, that's what CSS is for. You want to change your fonts. 
uh, you know, we are not going to get into the, all of the crazy things that you can do with CSS. Um, CSS is actually, we'll talk about it when we get there, but CSS is itself has become something of a programming language almost. It's not really, but there are, there are web designers who are very proud of the fact that they've done incredible things, including animating X-Wing, you know, flying across the screen in CSS with no coding whatsoever, with no JavaScript. Okay. And, and that's actually, I want you to show that, show you this. You'll notice there is no JavaScript here. And I want you to take note of that, right? Web design fundamentally doesn't necessarily have JavaScript in it. And uh, learning web design is a very famous book. It does have a little seg segment in it that's in JavaScript. And that segment that about JavaScript has actually been written by somebody else because the author doesn't consider that an important thing. And when you're creating websites and not web applications, uh, they are primarily composed of mostly static, meaning not changing elements of HTML and CSS. Most of the time that have been derived from Markdown. And so there is no JavaScript. In fact, when you, when it comes to vanilla JavaScript, that comes on the scene when you kind of want to do things that get triggered by other things. Well, CSS has covered most of that, right? We are not going to get deep into CSS, but we are going to learn enough basic CSS so that you can, you can understand what your page looks like. Um, I think something, one last thing is really important that I note that's not going to be here. There is not going to be anything about creating interactive forms uh, or submissions or, um, you know, we, we do that in JavaScript, but we do like an interactive story game, but none of that interactivity with a website is included in this stage. We are going to do programming very you know javascript programming python programming and go programming at the same time in a different stage so lest anybody panic in the code stage which is not for a while we will be learning to code in three languages at the same time we're going to be learning javascript we're going to be learning python and we're going to be learning go at the same time, and I, it's very important that I say vanilla JavaScript, right? We're going to be learning those three programming languages at the same time from a very basic perspective. In other words, just enough to help you understand what coding is about. We're not going to be doing any lead code or any of that. So, so just know that that's coming. Uh, so where's the JavaScript? So that's the answer to that. Structured data. So along with um, building a website, a lot of times people don't realize that you have to have data. In fact, data-driven websites are the most powerful. And so we will be learning to structure data into JSON and YAML. And we'll learn what that means, what does structured data look like. Um, to give you a sense of this really quickly, if you go to rvxrob slash, uh, sorry, github.com slash rvxrob, uh, raw, eh, rob slash uh, cv, you can see um, the idea here, so here is data.yaml. Uh, this is my, this is what structured data looks like. And as you can probably guess, structured data is much more easy to maintain. And by keeping data in a structured format, uh, earlier, early in your career, as you go through this kind of stuff, you'll find that there are many opportunities for you to use structured data as a sort of database, we, we, we're not going to do databases at all during the beginner boost, but um, most structured data is a database to some degree, right? A place to put data that you can be then queried. Um, for our purposes, though, static structured data, JSON and YAML uh, in particular, I made the TOML logo, by the way, if you know TOML, um, that this structured data is for use in capturing, you know, some very structured data about a thing. So I used to use structured data uh, uh, for my school. I, you know, I had all my students were in there. Uh, did I have to implement an entire Postgres database or whatever? No, I didn't. I just maintained these static structured data files. So it's super important that when you're learning about writing documents on the web, that those documents include structured data, which can then be converted into, you know, non-structured data or markup, data with markup that can then be, say, seen in a web page, as is the case 
for this um, little thing here. Let me actually one last thing. So if you wanted to see what, what this is, we're, we are going to make this. This is kind of a nice lead in. So I did make a resume rendering of this. And we will learn a little bit of, of something. But here's the PDF. This PDF was actually generated from that structured data. And as you can see, you can use, I sorry for the flashbang there. You can use structured data to do a lot of amazing things. And we are going to begin using structured data to start working on your resume and your CV on GitHub. And by doing that, you'll automatically be able to say that you've had experience with JSON YAML writing structured data. And um, we'll also be ready to do some of the coding later on to turn that structured data into a static website, either as, or as a PDF or however you want to do it, so that you can then show that you've done something, right? So one of your first web projects, your first apps in your portfolio will be your resume or your CV, and you can actually provide a link to it that way. Um, and you, the thing that's really great about it is you can go in and change it, and then you can re-render it. So you can actually have it be uh, tailored to a specific job. So if you want to get like a back-end uh, systems developer job like I have right now, or you want to do IT infrastructure, even though you have experience there, you can, you can create a different resume depending on that from the same structured data. And you have an app, an app, you know, you have experience with coding to show that you've got at least that level. And I, I feel like that's a really relevant project right off the bat for everybody. Everybody needs to have something like that. So this has been a long video, but this is the overview video of what we're going to be covering during the Create a Basic website stage. So stay tuned and follow along with the other videos. Again, if you have questions, come join us on the Beginner Boost or during the Coffee Boost or in the Discord.